It is one of America's greatest mysteries. What happened to three men after they pulled off the most daring prison break in 1962? Only the worst criminals were sent to Alcatraz, and for 29 years, it was the most secure federal prison in the country, surrounded by the cold, rough waters of the Pacific. But brothers John and Clarence Anglet and Frank Morris disappeared into the night and have never been found. A letter allegedly written by one of the escapees recently came to light. KPIX 5 exclusively obtained it from a source. My name is John Anglin. I escaped from Alcatraz in June 1962 with my brother Clarence and Frank Morris. I'm 83 years old and in bad shape. I have cancer. Yes, we all made it that night, but barely. The FBI says this is the most recent piece of evidence that forced the agency to reopen the iconic cold case. The letter was sent to the San Francisco Police Department's Richmond station in 2013. It's interesting. Um, I mean, it's obviously a, a very famous case here in San Francisco. KPIX5 security expert Jeff Harp spent 21 years with the FBI, but did not work directly on this case. As a law enforcement person, I'd, I'd like to think that um, you know, their escape attempt was not, was not fruitful for them. Uh, personally, as, as someone who swims in the bay and um, we have a triathlon that goes on every year and, and there's not a single person that doesn't make that swim. This past summer, I got an exclusive tour of some never before seen parts of Alcatraz. After months of meticulous planning, on the night of June 11, 1962, the trio of bank robbers squeezed through the vents in the back of their cells. They literally drill small holes around the existing vent and then push that concrete in. The next morning, guards found these dummy heads made of plaster, paper mache, paint, and real human hair in their cells. According to the letter, Frank died in 2008 and John's brother died three years later. The writer makes a deal. If you announce on TV that I will be promised to first go to jail for no more than a year and get medical attention, I will write back to let you know exactly where I am. This is no joke. The U.S. Marshals, which is the sole agency investigating the case today, says the FBI lab examined the letter for fingerprints and DNA and the handwriting. These are copies of John England's handwriting from a letter and an inmate request he wrote in 1960. The FBI's results for this letter were inconclusive. So that means yes, it means no. You know, it kind of, it this leaves everything in limbo. The writer of the letter says that he spent many years after the escape from Alcatraz living in Seattle. He also mentions that he spent eight years in North Dakota and currently lives in Southern California. In a statement to KPIX 5, the U.S. Marshals Service writes, there is absolutely no reason to believe that any of them would have changed their lifestyle and became completely law-abiding citizens after this escape. The Federal Bureau of Prisons say that they drowned once they got off of Alcatraz and, and their bodies were swept out to the Pacific Ocean. End of story. If the men are alive today, Frank Morris would be 90 years old and John and Clarence Anglin would be 86 and 87. Well, I didn't believe that they made it, but that was because of what, what the officers were saying. Jolene Babiak was 15 years old and living on the island with her family when the men broke free. Her father was the acting warden. I was awakened by the siren, which I'd never heard before, so I wasn't really sure exactly what it was, although I kind of knew. Um, my mother met me on the stairs and she said, get dressed, we've got to search the house. She has since written several books on Alcatraz. I showed her a copy of the letter. No evidence, lots of allegations, no real evidence, nothing you can follow up on. They're getting up there in age, so um, someone knows, you know, because if they made it out, they communicated with somebody. So somebody somewhere knows that's still alive. In San Francisco, Betty Yu, KPIX 5.